Hey guys, welcome to 12 Tone. Today we're going to talk about modes. Up until now we've only discussed major and a little minor, but that's not even scratching the surface of the vast array of scales available to us. Modes are one of the simplest groups of variant scales out there, and if you ask me, they're also one of the coolest. They're also known as Greek modes or church modes, but those names are historically inaccurate so I'll avoid them. In the minor video, we talked about something called the relative major and minor, where two different scales with two different roots share the same key signature. Modes can be thought of as an extension of that idea. Each mode shares all the same notes with a relative major, but with a different tonic. Modes can also be thought of as white key scales, as they're the only seven note scales that can be played entirely on the white keys of a piano with no accidentals, since each of them shares a key signature with C major. So let's start there. Major is identical to the first mode, Ionian. It's just a different name for the same scale. But if we play the same notes with D as the tonic, we get what's known as D Dorian. This is a much more interesting scale commonly used in folk music in songs like Scarborough Fair. Dorian sounds very similar to natural minor, but with a major sixth degree. It also contains one of my favorite chord movements, one minor to four major. But let's keep going. Next, we can play the same notes starting on E. This gives us what's called E Phrygian. Phrygian is a very dark scale, similar to natural minor, but with a flat second. This gives you some really cool chord options like the five diminished triad or the flat two major. Phrygian is a great scale to write in if you want your piece to sound dark and evil, and is unsurprisingly popular in metal music. Conversely, when we move up to F, we get one of the brightest and most consonant of the modes, Lydian. Lydian looks a lot like a major scale, but with a sharp fourth degree. This gives us a tritone between the root and the fourth, but more importantly, it gives us a whole step between the fourth and the major third. This removes a lot of the tension between the two notes, and makes basically the entire scale sound resolved and at rest. Moving on to G, we get to Mixolydian, which is a major scale with a flat seventh. This can be thought of as a dominant scale because the tonic seventh chord is a dominant seven. Dominant scales are a really important subset of scales, especially for improvisation, but we'll get to that later. If we start on A, we get what we call Aeolian, but really, it's just natural minor again. Much like Ionian was major, Aeolian is just another name for natural minor. It's good to know, but not particularly exciting. But when we go to B, we get Locrian. Locrian is the darkest of the modes, and is the only one without a perfect fifth degree. It can be thought of as a minor scale with a flat two and a flat five, but really, it's not a scale you probably want to be writing in a lot of the time. It can be useful in passing interludes, or for soloing purposes, but it's a very unstable scale to be sitting in for very long. Another way to organize these is from sharpest to flattest in a given key signature. Let's start with C major again. This time though, we'll do all the modes in C. So here we have C Ionian. If we add one sharp to the fourth degree, we get Lydian. Lydian is the sharpest of the modes, all the other ones are flatted. Moving down, the first flat goes to the seventh degree, making Mixolydian. The second flat goes to the three, making Dorian. Then the sixth, making Aeolian. The two, making Phrygian. And finally, the five, making Locrian. While terms like bright and happy have enough subjectivity that you can't define them rigidly, this list gives us a good idea of which modes they might better apply to. If you want to write something minor feeling but not super sad, for instance, you might want to use Dorian instead. But really though, you should just try experimenting with all of them to see how they make you feel. Another use of the modes is in what are called chord scales. I'm simplifying a lot here, and my guitarist friends will hate me for it, but basically these are temporary scales you use to improvise or write lines over specific chords. So while you may be playing a piece in E major, if you're soloing and the band goes to a G-sharp minor, you could start playing a G-sharp Phrygian. This gives your solo a more harmonic grounding by acknowledging the current chord. Like I said, this gets way more complicated, and we'll address this in more detail later, but in the meantime, it's a useful thing to keep in mind. Anyway, that's modes. Check out the exercises, have some fun with these, and keep on rockin'.